Mrs. Mountford? Yes. Sorry, but I've already spoken with two policemen. No, we're not from the police. We're uh... Sherlock Holmes. Very old friend of your husband's. Uh, I'm sorry, who? I don't think he ever mentioned you. Oh, he must have done. This is, this is horrible, isn't it? I mean, I, I just can't believe it. I only saw him the other day. Same old Ian, not a care in the world. Sorry. My husband has been depressed for months. Who are you? Really strange that he hired a car. Yeah. Why would he do that? It's a bit suspicious, isn't it? No, it isn't. He forgot to renew the tax on the car, that's all. Oh, well, that was Ian. That was Ian all over. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Wasn't it? Interesting. Oh, I couldn't believe it when I heard the news. Mr Norris had been coming here for about a year and Simon liked him. He was doing very well. Not that he ever practices, of course. How well did you know him? Not very. He put up an advertisement in the newsagent. That's how we found him. Did you get any references? No. Should I have? Why are you asking? I was just trying to find out a little more about him, Mrs Parker. Um, did he ever mention family or friends, anything like that? He never mentioned any family. But I'm sure he once taught at Lyme Park. It's a school in Buckinghamshire. There was a piano teacher who sounded similar to him. And his name was Morris, not Morris. Thank you. Daddy! Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Why don't you go play with your cars, Janie? <laughs> Where have you been? I telephoned the police station a while ago. They said that you've been let out on bail. I needed a walk. Whose clothes were they in your car, Michael? What's the problem? He's addicted, obsessed with his job. He's never there. Evenings. Weekends. There's always some excuse. Um, you said on the phone you had three young children? They've given up asking when Daddy's coming home. Oh, and there's mental cruelty, too. My Christmas present. What was it? A kitchen bin. Well, that's men for you. I should have cut up his precious shirts and stuffed them down his throat. Hello? I've just had a call from Mrs. Beverly. She said that she'd heard that we were moving and she was asking what the asking price was. Jamie? Uh, well, what did you tell her? Well, I didn't tell her anything. I just said that it was early days and that you were dealing with it. She wants you to call her. What's going on, Jamie? For everyday cleaning, I use all these. And for tougher jobs, I use Silip Bang Grime and Lime. Stop. Silip Bang is also perfect on everyday stains. Finally, my cleaning's simpler. Now I only use Silip Bang. On tough dirt, I leave it for two to three minutes. And for everyday cleaning, a quick spray. Ta-da! Spotless. Now all I need is Silip Bang Grime and Lime. Hi, it's me. Darling, how are you? Fine, thanks, Mum. You? Yeah, fine. How's Leon? Very happy. He's here right now, actually. Is there any chance we might see you on your birthday? If you want. Oh, wonderful. Well, um, shall I invite some people round, Auntie Bruce? Maybe a <laughs> What can over there, if that's what you're getting at? What are you doing? Oh, Mrs. Sorrel. Just boring the firebird. It's lovely, isn't it? The gift of flight. So precious and so easily lost. Do you know the story? I may have heard it as a child. I thought it might be something we could all share. Hey, I don't suppose you'd like to tell it to the group. No, I don't suppose I would. Have you seen my boy? Robert. He'll be along later, I expect, with the others. Are you sure I can't persuade you? Quite sure. Hello, everyone. It's all about telling stories. So what do I do? Do you think you can do it? No. I've heard so much about you. See you later. Mm. Can do that. Somebody must have said something. Ah. Right.
think you're very good, dear.